In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to explain you how you can nest Plank family into the other family in order to get those Planks family, which is created as a line based family in Revit. And how you can inside that family create different types and how you can also add parameters such as density and get something like this. This method also helped me to create this very simple project and get beautiful renders of it using Enscape. And you can find it very useful if you would like to create something like this as well. In front of me is, as you can see, a rectangle with some parameters, but if I go to front view, you will see that we also have the height, which means that we are not having a rectangle, we have a single plank or the parametric box, and that box has a couple of parameters assigned for the width, the depth, and the height as well, and I can, of course, if needed, change it and our model is going to react and next to those parameters for the width, uh, depth and height I also have material parameter assigned. And if you may wonder how you can create a parametric box in Revit, I created a separate video about this and you can find it if you click on a card above. And how we can create the Revit family of planks out of one plank. So for that we need to go to file and to pick a proper family template and for this I will be using metric generic model line based. Once it's open, go to our family of the plank and then load this one and just place it here. So you can just place it randomly as I did. Then I'm just going to create two more reference planes, something like this. And I will open our parameters so what i would like to do right now is to create a couple of parameters because i would like to nest our plank into the new family and if you remember we have a b and h as well as material parameter from our plank so i will just start creating them and i will just make here parameter which is called plank a and i'm gonna make that one of 30 for example of let's say 40 then i'm gonna make Plank B, I'm gonna make it 80, and I'm gonna make plank H, which is height, and I'm gonna make it one meter, for example. I will just click OK. Actually, I will click apply, and I will do this. I will select our plank, I will go to edit type, and then for A, I will click on this box here, you see associate family parameter so here is going to be plank a let's let's see the changes then this is going to be plank b and then this is going to be plank h let's hit apply and you see that it's changed but now you may wonder why i have created those two reference planes and if i go back and if you take a closer look how i made this this is our center reference plane so what I would like to have is that our family here starts from this angle, from this point. Therefore, I created this reference plane and the other one on the other side. So what I'm going to do, I will create two dimensions and I'm going to create two parameters here. Actually, one parameter and two dimensions. And this one is going to be called as plank half so let's just click ok we have nothing here let's go here to the fa uh, family types and then for plank half let's type plank a divided by two and then this is going to be always the half of the width of the plank select this one and just assign the sign the same parameter then when this is done i can I will just turn on thin lines. I will go to align tool and then I will align it to this reference plane and then to this half. I will align this half and I'm gonna lock it. And I'm going to select our plank and then I will go to array tool here. I will just take the number of five, for example. It's quite important to go to the last and let's click and make it to the last 
for example, like this. Let's hit enter. So everything seems fine. So why I made it like this? Because I would like to take a line tool, take this reference plane, this half here, and then lock it. And as you can see, we have a couple of them. But what we do not have right now is this number. So I will go to the last one. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to create parameter for this one. So it's going to be called this plank number. Let's hit OK. And then, of course, that we could go and we can type number. But what's going on if we over size that number, for example. So let's say that I would like to control this kind of density. So what I'm going to do, I will just go and I'm going to create the new number parameter, which is going to be called as density. And I'm going to place it into the other. So density. And I will make density, for example, 1.5. And then for a plank number, I will just go to the length divided by and then I'm going to go plank A multiply density. Hit enter. So it's up to you if you would like to have density as a instance or the type parameter. So let's just hit OK. OK. Uh, in this case, you see that we could not have plank number as a type parameter because the length is the instance. So I need to select plank number to go to this pencil and then just click instance and just hit apply so it will work. And the same thing if, is if you would like to control the density in your properties palette. So we can just maybe make it as instance. Let's hit OK. And we are almost done. There is one last thing I need to do, and that's that I need to select one plank. I need to go to edit type and then here for material, I need to create one new and I will create it as a uh, planks material. Let's hit OK. That's fine. And also what we can do, maybe I can just go and I can create new type. So this one is, for example, 40 by. 80 i can create new one which is going to be 30 by 60 and then for this new one i will just go here 30 60 let's hit okay and i can maybe increase this number to two it doesn't matter so this is just really not so important because this is the instance parameter and i'm going to save this family let's create a new project and then this family, planks, I'm going to load into our project one. And I cannot create them because I need to draw them on a face. If you just click place on work plane, I will be able to create as many of them as I want to. And for example, you see this is 40 by 80. I can just replace them by uh, with those 30 by 60. And of course, I can play play with the density in our properties palette and i can also make this total height of two meters for example doesn't matter but what's going on if you would like to place them day to stay horizontally you can do that as well so i will just open our south elevation view i'm going to select this one create similar and then i just need to pick the proper reference plane so here they are so this is where I made them. This is how it looked like. And you can create a lot of very useful things using uh, this method, using line-based elements. They are, I have to say, pretty, pretty useful. Based on the same system, I created all those wall coverings. That's pretty simple to be created. And also out of this very simple model, I've got this beautiful render using Enscape. And uh, this is just one use case how you can use and create your line based elements they are pretty powerful in revit and i really hope that you are going to find this tutorial useful and if you would like to level up your rendering skills with enscape just watch this tutorial